All right, this video we are going to make some uh, SSH configuration changes to match our security standard. The two specific changes we need to make, we need to uh, enable key-based authentication um, so that users have to use keys to log in. That, that's better than just passwords. If you just allow password authentication, uh, then somebody could sit out there with a script and just hammer your server trying to guess passwords. So um, if the... If the if the user can only log in with keys, uh, then it, it's more secure. That's like two-factor authentication if you have a passphrase on your key because the passphrase is something you know and the key is something you have and that is what we are going to implement. The other change is we're going to make it so that root cannot log in remotely. That's a best practice to prevent people from logging in directly. Keep people from trying to guess your password. Uh, if you are allowing passwords, and it also makes it so that you know who did things. So even if you have your authorized users logging in as, as root, if you have three different people logged in at the same time and somebody does something, then you may not know who it was that did it. Uh, but if you force them to use sudo, then you can check back through the logs and see, see who was doing what, especially if you're making them use individual commands in sudo. So... Um, first thing we need to do is make it so that our user, uh, no, no, first thing we'll do is do the root login. So right now, root can log in directly. So if I go back out of my system, I can demonstrate that, right? That's not root's password. That's my other password. It's not going to work. Sorry. I can demonstrate that by logging in as root. We don't want that to happen. So right now I'm logged in as root, which is fine. I'll leave it for now. Um, but the way we disable that is we change the file SSH under, uh, sshd underscore config that is in Etsy SSH directory. There's also an SSH config file. You want to modify the SSHD because that, conf con that config is the one used by the server process uh, that listens for connections. The other one is used by the client if you try to SSH from this system to some other system. So we want to do that. There are a bunch of items in this file, um, and they're all most of them are commented out. So you could change things if you wanted. Say port 22 is the default. SSH port, if you wanted to change that, you could. We're not going to do that. We're going to leave it on port 22, but you could change that. Any of these things that are commented, commented out, those are showing you the default value. So you can change those things uh, as you learn more about what the system is doing uh, to meet your needs. We are going to change permit root login. I made a copy of that line. I left the commented line above just because I like to do that. And then I change permit root login to no. I save the file and then I need to restart the SSHD. And system, never mind, I'm not going to say that. I had the order wrong because the newer command puts the order in a, the order different. So if you'll notice what I'm doing right now, there, there's a chance you could lock yourself out, which hopefully you watch another video. I'm going to use the second window to test my change. So in theory, it shouldn't let me log in. It asked me for the password, but if you notice, it's not letting me log in. So I could sit here trying to guess the password all day, even though I'm typing the correct password. It's not going to let me log in. So that's part one of our uh, process uh, to secure SSH uh, configuration. Part two is we are going to disable password authentication. What that means is our users will have to have a private key, public key pair in order to um, log in to our server. So what we're going to do is we're going to log in to our server as our regular user ID. I will be using RBE1111 for that. Uh, I am connecting directly to the private IP, so you need to be connected to the VPN for this to work. Put in your password. If I can remember my password. All right, there we go. So I'm in. So uh, in order to generate a key pair, 
you need to run the command ssh dash keygen dash t rsa. This will generate you a RSA uh, key pair, right? It asks you some questions. Where do you want to save the file? That's a fine location to save the file, the .ssh id underscore RSA. I recommend you leave that uh, alone. Um, passphrase, you want to put a passphrase in here. This, is, this should be different than your password. And this is used to encrypt your private key. So I just generated my key pair. It put it in home, rbe1111.ssh. So let's go into the .ssh directory and see what we have. We have a id underscore rsa, which is the private key. And if you look at this, if you go up to the top, it says begin private key, it's encrypted. So anytime you try to use this key, you have to enter your passphrase. And then we have a public key. Our public key. That's what the public key looks like. Um, yeah. I was about to go off on a tangent about public key cryptography, but the short version is these keys are different, but they're mathematically related. So anything encrypted with the user's public key can be decrypted using the private key. In theory, only that user has their private key. So if you if you encrypt something using someone's public key, you should feel pretty comfortable that only they can decrypt that thing. So we have uh, a public key and a private key. We're going to want the private key to be on our client system, and we want the public key to be on our server system, the system we're connecting to. So uh, since we're already on that system, we'll take care of the public key first. And what we need to do is we need that public key to be in a file called id underscore rsa.pub. No, that's not what we need the file to be called. We need to be called authorized keys. So I'm going to copy, make a copy of my uh, public key and call it authorized keys. This will only work because I don't have an authorized keys file. If I already had an authorized keys file and I wanted to enter another key, which you can easily do, you can have multiple keys in your authorized keys file, I would need to get that that key to be appended to the file and there's some different ways I could do that but we don't really need to worry about that right now because we are probably only going to have one key uh, in this class. So I have my public key in my authorized keys file. The permissions on this file are important. So if I do ls-l I need to be the only one that has access to that file. Right now it is readable by other people, the authorized keys file. So I'm going to change the permissions using chmod, I'm going to do go minus r, because the group and other both have read, authorized keys. I'm going to verify my change. All right, and then I'm going to quickly check one other thing. The ssh.ssh directory also needs to have type permissions, and it does have type permissions. So that is the server side of configuring your Public key, private key pair. I am going to leave this window alone because I'm logged into my system. I'm going to go to my other client system, and I need to get my, I need to get my um, private key down to my client system. So I'm going to cd in the, into the .ssh directory, and I'm going to use scp to copy that key down. I know you're thinking, oh, Rich, SCP, awesome. I'm so glad that we're finally using SCP for real things after you making us use it to get passwords all this time. Yes, this is why we are, this is why we did those things, so that you know how to use SCP now. So I'm going to use SCP to get my key. So hopefully you guys remember the syntax for doing this. I'm, this means, hey, secure copy, I want to be this user at this IP address, which is my server and my user, and the name of the file I want to get, id underscore rsa. And where do I want to put it? I want to put it in the current directory because I switched into my .ssh directory. So that's where I need to put it. Run that command. It's going to ask me for my password. And I messed that up. Hopefully some of you guys are like, hey, Rich, you're so stupid. That's in your .ssh directory, and you're right. So that key is in my .ssh directory, so I did not put the proper path. So now I'm going to get my key, 
and I totally did that on purpose to demonstrate something you guys do all the time by messing things up. Yes, I did do that on purpose. So now I'm just going to verify my key is there. My key is there. I'm the only one with permissions to, to view my key. So in theory, now if I use SSH to log into my remote system with my sample user ID, I can log in, hopefully. All right, so now I'm logged in as my regular user ID, and if I wanted to do something system related, I would need to use sudo either with the command or to become root. So that was how I got my key down to my local system. So now I know my key works, so I can go up to see, I can go back to my server, and I can go back into my sshd config, Oh, not root. If you get that error message, that means you're not root. So now I can go back into my SSH, sshd config and I can look for the line about password authentication and change it to no. So this is the line that says disable passwords. So we want to change that to no, so that you can't log in with a password. And then we want to restart SSH again. And now we will see if I, oh, I'm still on my system. So I'm going to log out, and now I'm going to log back in. Put my passphrase, and I can still get in. So that's awesome to know. One thing that we have just done is made it so that we cannot log in from CNTV Serve. So what do I mean by that? Well, let me go demonstrate. I'm going to get back out of here. Now I'm going to SSH to CNT Serve. Uh, no. I'm going to SSH to CNT serve, and now I'm going to try to log in to my system from CNT serve. And it's going to say, hey, do you want to connect? I'm going to say yes. And it's going to say, sorry, bro, you didn't pre present us with a acceptable authentication method. So what we need to do is we need to get our uh, private key up to CNT serve so we can use that. So the easiest way to do that is to go back to our local system, make sure we know where our, our key is this time. And now we are gonna use SCP, can you believe that, can you believe that guys? Using SCP twice in one video. Oh my God, it's almost like it's an important command to know how to use. So we're gonna SCP our dot SSH, ID underscore RSA, our private key file. We want to copy that up to CNT serve. And we want to put that in our .ssh directory. So this will copy our .ssh ID underscore RSA to CNT serve, put in our .ssh directory. It's going to ask for the passphrase. You can type your passphrase, but it is not going to work because you did not put your public key on CNT serve. So yeah, that's not gonna work. So anyway, put the password in. Put the password in. CNT serves password, your, your user ID's password on CNT serve. So now if I go back to CNT serve, Now if I go back to CNT serve and I try to SSH to my other system as me, it asks me for my passphrase and now I can get on. So that's what you need to do um, to secure your system uh, to, to not allow root to log in directly and to configure SSH authentication keys and then disable password authentication.